My brothers and sisters, I want to share two stories with you from the Sahaba, your fathers. Look at their understanding of Jannah and look at our understanding of Jannah. I want you to leave this hadith with me, please. One of the companions, his name was Rabia bin Ka'b al Aslami. And this companion was a was a very young companion. And this companion, he belonged to the people of Ahl Sufa. For those of you who don't know who Ahl Sufa is, in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was a section in the back that belonged to the people called Ahl Sufa. Ahl Sufa were the people that had literally no money. Today, you and I, we say, brother, you know what? Well, I'm doing it tough, man. I'm doing it hajar. But really, what you and I mean, as in I'm doing it tough, means I'm not driving an AMG, I'm driving my dad's Tiara Camry, you know? But for these people, wallahi, they were really doing it tough. Imagine you lived in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and you were that poor, you didn't have enough money to buy clothes, to cover your aura. Imagine you prayed in the masjid of Rasulullah and your aura was showing. So when I tell you that these people were really doing it tough, they were really doing it tough. So this young companion, Rabia bin Ka'b al-Aslami, he was one of the servants of the Prophet of Allah. And please, I want you to imagine that you're living there. Forget about the lights. I want you to imagine you're living in Medina. You're living in the city of Rasulullah You're in his masjid. And you are the servant of Rasulullah. And because you believe in Iman, because you have Tawheed and you believe in Allah, you have reached such a state, you don't even have enough money to feed yourself. So this young companion, he was one of the servants of the Prophet of Allah. Now I want you to imagine you're him. Imagine you had the honor of serving the Prophet of Allah. So the Prophet of Allah, he used to come out of his house for the tahajjud prayer. And this young Sahabi, Rabia bin Ka'b al-Aslami, he used to bring the bowl of water for the Prophet of Allah so he can make wudu. So the Prophet of Allah comes out, Rabia says, this is authentic hadith, sahih hadith. Rabia says the Prophet of Allah, so he goes to prepare the bowl of water for the Prophet of Allah to make wudu. Then he comes to the Prophet of Allah and he gives him the bowl. So the Prophet of Allah looking at Rabia, seeing how poor he is, seeing his condition. You know, I assume that he felt sorry for him. So he says to him, Rabia, ask me, man. Rabia, make a wish. Who's asking? The Prophet of Allah. The one who if he raise his hands, Wallahi, Allah will allow the heavens to rain gold if he asked for it. And this young Sahabi now, imagine what an opportunity. I want you to imagine, you know, some of us, maybe because the Prophet of Allah is a fast stretch. I want you to imagine Bill Gates. You went to visit Bill Gates, you know, and you're sitting in his room. You're having a good conversation with Bill Gates. And you know how much money he has. So he turns around and, you know, he knows where you live. He knows your circumstances. So he says to you, brother, sister, you know what? Open checkbook. Ask me, what do you want? So this young Sahabi, Prophet of Allah is asking. He says, Oh Prophet of Allah, I want your companionship in Jannah. For you and I, we say, brother, I'm happy to just enter paradise. Look how these people thought, man. He says, a Prophet of Allah, I want your suhbah. I want your friendship in Jannah. 
So the Prophet of Allah, he asks him again, almost as if to indicate that Rabi'ah, I'm not talking about Akhirah. I'm talking about he now. What do you want? You want a wife? You want a house? You want to tell me what do you want? Make a wish. So he looks at the Prophet of Allah. He says, a Prophet of Allah, that's all I want. He says, that's all I want, O Prophet of Allah. The only thing I wish for, the only thing that I desire, the only thing I want from this world is your companionship in Jannah. So the Prophet of Allah, he says, O Rabi'ah, you've asked for something massive. Rabi'ah, you need to help me. You need to assist me in your request in making a lot of sujood. Another companion, my brothers, he comes to the Prophet of Allah and again, I want you to see the mindset. I want you to think like Sahaba thought. A man comes to the Prophet of Allah and he says, Oh Prophet of Allah, when I'm with you, I'm elated. I'm flying. He says, Oh Prophet of Allah, but then when I leave you and I go back home to my family, he says, Oh Prophet of Allah, I start to miss you. He says, Oh Prophet of Allah, I start to miss you. My heart yearns to see you. He says, Oh Prophet of Allah, then I leave my family. I come back. I lay my eyes on you and our Prophet of Allah, I find peace and happiness in my heart once more. But, O Prophet of Allah, the thought came to me. Soon you will die and I will die. O Prophet of Allah, you will be in paradise up there with the Prophets and I, if I entered paradise, I will be down there, yani in the lower levels. He says, O oh, Prophet of Allah, how can Jannah be Jannah if I'm not with you? For one of the very few times, the Prophet of Allah was speechless. So Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam comes down and says to the Prophet of Allah that tell your Ummah, tell your men, tell your followers, they will be with the ones that they love in Jannah. Anas radiallahu anhu used to say, by Allah, there was no hadith that was more beloved to us than this hadith. For by Allah, there was no one we loved more than the Prophet of Allah, Abu Bakr and Umar ibn al-Khattab. This was Jannah for your companions. This was Jannah for the Sahaba. My brothers and sisters, I ask you, when you think about yourself and you think about Jannah, where do you see yourself? Are you just happy to just make it? Or are you of those very few people who want the high levels? Because my brothers and sisters, Wallahi, I have news for you. Don't think that Jannah is all the same. You know, my brothers, what pushes you to do what you do in this world? What makes you wake up every morning and go to work? What, your love for work? What makes you get up every morning and go to work? Your love for work? No. Your love for this. Because you know, right? I work because I need this and I need this so that I can get through my daily life. Yes or no? What makes you go to school in the morning? What? Your love for knowledge? No. But you know, I need to go to school to get a good education. Right? And with a good, you know, with a good education, then I can get a good job. And with a good job, it always comes back down to what? These ones. Today I'm here to tell you, why do we do what we do? Why do we fast? Why do we pray? Why do we hold these events? Why do you do what you do as a Muslim? 
It's also for these ones. But not here. There. Don't think for a second, my brothers. Jannah is the reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, for those that are successful on the day of judgment, I will reward them. What is Allah going to reward you? My brother and my sister, this is now very personal now. Because Allah is talking to you. With all of these difficulties in dunya, you know, through, throughout the three days, we've been trying to encourage you to become a better Muslim, to become a better Muslimah, to become someone that's, you know, all of these things. But for why? What's the purpose? What's the payment? What is the reward? What is to happen, you know, if I become the best Muslimah who's an active da'i, who's an active this and an active that, what's the reward? Allah says, if you are successful, if you pass for you, I have prepared something. My reward to you is something no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, no heart and no mind has ever imagined or contemplated. This is what I have prepared. This is what I have prepared for those believers that are successful. I have prepared for them a paradise, the likes of which no one has ever seen or heard or even imagined. This is what awaits you, my brother and my sister. Jannah, Jannat, Tajri min tahtiha al anhar. A paradise awaits you under which rivers flow underneath your feet.